name is Evangelos Gamas, and today I'm going to go through a presentation in the field of solid state hydrogen storage. Now, the presentation will begin with a brief introduction about all the fundamental parts of hydrogen and why hydrogen has so much potential to be used the fuel of the future. But on the other hand, we must make sure to understand that there are a lot, still a lot of challenges to be overcome in order to achieve a solid and valid uh, hydrogen economy. Then I'm going to go through the hydrogen storage sector. I'm going to focus, of course, in the field of solid state hydrogen storage. I will explain all the fundamentals, all the science, but at the same time, some of the technological aspects that we need to understand for the solid state hydrogen storage. Thermodynamic aspect. And at the end of the day, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to talk a bit about the numerical description, how, can we, how we can establish a numerical model based on the outcomes of the solid state hydrogen storage. And finally, how to perform a valid and solid thermal management of metal hydride reactors in order to uh, enhance the whole reaction. So, to begin with, as you can see, the question is why hydrogen? And the answer is pretty simple over here. Hydrogen is a very abundant element. It's literally everywhere in the universe. From the air, earth, sea, water, everywhere. Uh, besides that, when it comes to normal condition of pressure and temperature, that means one atmosphere and 20 degrees centigrade, hydrogen is in gas state. Also, hydrogen is odorless, tasteless, and um, colorless. We cannot feel it, we cannot see it. At the same time, of course, it's non-toxic, means that we can breathe it without nothing happens to, um, to our body. But unfortunately for us, it is quite flammable. Now, if we need to make it liquid, we have to go to really low temperature. We have to reach 200 and, uh, minus 252 points. Uh, 87 degrees centigrade and of course if we go a bit lower at, at, at some point at minus 259.34 it solidifies. Now if we have a critical look over here on the phase diagram for hydrogen we're gonna see that a critical point for hydrogen is at minus 140 um, degrees centigrade at 13 atmospheres and now if we need to compare the density of gaseous hydrogen, uh, in, okay, to compare it with air, we will see that uh, ga gaseous hydrogen is almost 7% to the density of air. At the same time, liquid hydrogen is almost 7% to the density of water. Now, also, hydrogen is a fuel, okay? Everybody has in mind that hydrogen is a gas, but yes, it's a fuel as well. So, we have to compare hydrogen with other fuels that we're currently using. For example, if we compare hydrogen to methane and gasoline, in terms of the, uh, the density in both the gaseous and the liquid state, we're gonna see a few very, very important things. Which, uh, which are these? First of all, when it comes to the gas phase at 20 degrees in one atmosphere, we will see that hydrogen has quite low uh, absolute density. When it comes to methane, the density goes higher and the gasoline presents really high uh, absolute density. That means methane has more than eight times higher density and when it comes to gasoline, it has more than 55 times more higher uh, uh, density rather than hydrogen. Now, if we go, if we move from the gaseous state to the liquid state, we will see that at liquid state, uh, methane has six times more density and gasoline is almost ten times more density. Now, when it comes to the energetic point of view, when we need to, to compare the different energy densities of fuels, we can do it in two ways. The first way is if we do it in terms of uh, weight, the gravimetric energy density. And the second way is if we do it in terms of volume, the volumetric energy density. Now, 
Let's start with the uh, gravimetric energy density. Also, we'll have a look over here on that uh, histogram, but at the same time, we're going to have a look on the table uh, just below that. If you can see from the histogram over here, it's quite obvious that hydrogen has the maximum possible energy density per weight. It reaches almost 120 megajoules per kilogram. Now, if we compare it with other fuels, you will see that methane, propane and gasoline, they have almost three times lower energy density per unit of mass. If it comes to diesel, again, it's almost three, and methanol has the lowest uh, gravimetric energy density. Uh, on the other hand, if we go on the volumetric part, that's the problem for, uh, for hydrogen, is that hydrogen has very, very low uh, volumetric energy density. And if you compare it with the other fuels, for, like, for example, if we compare uh, compressed hydrogen at 350 bar with a compressed methane at the same pressure, the methane has three to four times more volumetric density. Same uh, when it comes to higher pressures at 700 bar or if it goes on the liquid form. So hydrogen in liquid form has, again, pretty low uh, volumetric energy density when it compared with other liquid fuels like methanol, propane, methane, and of course gasoline and diesel, which currently have quite high volumetric energy density. So one of the major problems with hydrogen as a fuel is the poor volumetric energy density as compared with the other fuels. Although the gravimetric energy density is very satisfactory, very high, sometimes more than three times as compared with other fuels like methane, propane, gasoline and diesel. Back in the 70s, uh, it was proposed by John Bocris that, you know something, we can totally replace fossil fuels with hydrogen, so all or the major amount of energy can come from hydrogen, so we can replace the fossil fuels for two reasons mainly. The first reason is purely environmental. We all know that when hydrocarbons are burned, the emissions are CO2 mostly. All right. The second disadvantage when it comes to fossil fuels when we burn hydrocarbons is the availability. Now, according to some experts, it seems that we have reached the maximum extraction rate at the moment. And from 2018 or maybe 2019, we're going to go lower and lower and lower. So, according to the forecast, it appears that up to 2050, there should be not much of a problem. But after that date, definitely, probably, we might have some issues. So, there are two things, the environmental impact and, of course, the availability. Uh, as for hydrogen, we all know, and we have discussed already that, the major issue is the volume, the poor volumetric density, and is less than 75% as compared with the gasoline. So we have to do something about this. In addition, in addition for the hydrogen economy, why not yet hasn't been implemented from the society, there are three main reasons. The hydrogen production that has to be, again, become more efficient the low, lower cost and the hydrogen production must become uh, from non-fossil fuel sources. The hydrogen storage, because we need to store the hydrogen before using it, and of course we have to go through the fuel cells and we have to further develop them in order to decrease the cost, increase the efficiency and of course make them, when it comes to the aerospace sector, uh, less uh, heavy. In addition to all of this, as you can see, the hydrogen economy demands a whole solid cycle to be there. This cycle comes from the hydrogen production, from renewables, from green sources, and not from, uh, from fossil fuel sources. Then we have to deliver hydrogen, we have to, to take the produced hydrogen to the refueling station or wherever we want to use it. We have to store it and compress it 
I would say, then we have to teach people how to treat with hydrogen. Right? Hydrogen, it can be a very, very nasty gas, especially when it is compressed. Then we have to go through codes and standards, safety aspects, we have to validate them, and of course we have to implement it in vehicles, in buildings, in the aerospace sector, wherever we want to use hydrogen. And finally, we have to go through the fuel cells and make them operate more efficient and more efficient. In our case, we're going to say a lot of things today about the hydrogen storage. So, hydrogen can be stored in several ways. It depends on the temperature, the pressure, and in general, okay, uh, about uh, the properties and all the variables that they are there when we're storing hydrogen. So, hydrogen can be stored by physical-based ways. That means it can be stored as compressed gas or in liquid form or in cold cryo-compressed form. In the other hand, on the other hand, we can store hydrogen by using several materials. There are some families of materials we can use, such as porous materials, so we have the adsorption or the physisorption when using, for example, MOFs. We can go to liquid organic materials, the interstitial hydrides with the reversible storage and desorption. We can discuss about this today, but also there are some complex hydrides like the lithium and, uh, and sodium borohydrides, and finally there is chemical waste. Now, whether it is compressed gas or liquid form or solid state storage, there are still challenges. There are some key issues. Some of those key issues are the volumetric density must be improved. Okay, what we, what, what we said so far is the volumetric density is a problem. The gravimetric density is quite high, but we can go even better. The kinetics of hydrogen storage and release must be increased. That means we're going to uh, lower the time to refuel the car. The thermodynamics must be also there, must be increased. Why? Two ways, because the thermodynamics affect the kinetics and at the same time the thermodynamics increase or decrease the cost. Furthermore, we need to increase the efficiency of the storage and release and of course the reversibility. We need to store hydrogen, but we need to take it back or the opposite. And finally, we need to have moderate operational temperatures and pressure conditions. That means if we want to use a fuel cell or hydrogen as a gas somewhere in Siberia, which it's very cold okay, during the, the year, that means we must make sure that okay, we have those conditions and everything is about to operate. Same with other environments like if we operate something in really, really hot environments. So all of these parameters are the key issues, are the challenges that we need to focus in terms uh, of hydrogen storage.